Welcome back to Strength Coach Tutorials number 26. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a dynamic chart for your testing results or any other fitness data that you wanna keep track of. And what I mean by a dynamic chart is that if I was to add another athlete into this fitness data, athlete 11, and then give them a score, they're gonna be automatically added to the chart. Similarly, I can just take that athlete and I can take them back out. This is a useful trick for anyone looking to keep track of fitness data, 1RM data, or any other kind of data that you wanna be able to visualize quickly and have it automatically update. So let's get into it. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna to need to do if we wanna create a dynamic chart that's gonna expand and shrink with our data is actually have some data to work with. So we're gonna use athlete testing data. So I'm gonna name my title athlete name and test number one. And let's add some athlete names. So athlete one, athlete two, athlete three. And Excel's pretty smart. If I actually highlight all of these, it's gonna know that I just added one each time. So I can drag in the bottom right corner and it's gonna be able to just add one for me and I'll drag it down to athlete 10. And we'll put 10 athletes in there. Um, the next thing, we'll put in our, our uh, test data and let's pretend it's a max bench press and let's say athlete number one bench is 100 kilograms and athlete two, 105, athlete three, 120, 95, 75, 60, 70, 75, 90, and 100. And that'll be our testing data. And then to make everything look nice, we'll just center justify it. So I'll select all the data and hit center. And there I think that looks nice. And just so it stands out, I'm gonna bold the titles. So that is our testing data. And you may have charts set up like this for RPEs, for test data, for sprint times, or any number of factors that we can be collecting. So from here, we're gonna actually format these as a table. So if I select all of the data, and then I click the button up in the top right corner, format as table, and this top gray one looks good to me, I'm gonna make sure that my table has headers is selected and I'm gonna click OK. And you'll see now we have a nice pretty table. And the reason this is important is because Excel is pretty smart with tables. It knows that when I add a value at the bottom, it's gonna automatically expand the table. And when I delete a row, it's gonna automatically shrink the table. And this is gonna be really important when we actually use this to make our chart. So just to show you what I'm talking about, I'm gonna add a value down at the bottom. And you can see as I add these values, the table automatically expands. And then I can delete the rows by right clicking and going down to delete and then click table rows. So we're gonna use this table to now um, create our chart. And there's a couple ways we can do this. Really, we're gonna just wanna select all of these values and then create the chart from that. But if you have one of these tables that's very, very big, an easy way to select all the values is that if you hold the cursor in the top left-hand corner, you're gonna get a little downwards 45 degree arrow. And if you click there, it'll just select all of the data for you. So now that we have all the data selected, I'm gonna insert a chart. So from there, we go um, up to the top, we'll hit insert and then we'll select bar chart. And you can see that it's automatically made a chart of our data. And I'm just gonna resize this a little bit so we can see. Um, delete the chart title so that the chart is maximized in area. So the cool thing now is now that this chart is um, linked to our table, if we add another athlete, what you're gonna see is the chart automatically expands and then we can put in their max bench press. Let's say um, they're really strong and they benched 130. So you can see that that automatically adds. And athlete 12 also is in our chart and they benched, um, let's say they benched 50. So you can see where they lay or where they fall in reference to all of the other athletes. Similarly, if we wanna remove athletes, we can just select athlete 11 and 12 and right click and we can hit delete table rows and they'll automatically come back out of our chart. So if we were using um, any kind of RPE data, these athlete names could easily be dates and we could put all of our training load data where it says test one and then we could get a bar chart um, over time of what this might look like. Or we could do daily wellness surveys or any number, number of things with this type of technique. Now one of the other tricks that we can use here is let's say we wanna add more data 
to this table. Um, if I type on the on the right side here, and let's say I want test number two, it's going to add another testing spot for me. And let's say this is max squat. So now we have a 200 kilo squat and a 205 and a 180 and a 65 and um, 90 and 100, 140, 150, 160, um, 90, and then 75. Whoops. So we'll take that last one out there. But you can see it's really easy now for me to just add another test um, kind of on the fly. And we can um, keep adding as many tests as we want and make the chart look however we want. And then one final trick that I'm going to show you today um, in terms of visualizing your data is let's say for test number one we want the values to be color coded in some way. We can select all of these values and then right beside where it says format as table there's a box that says conditional formatting and when we use conditional formatting there's a lot of options in there. So let's say we want an error bar or a data bar reference. So you can see that if we select this one it's going to um, have a bar that grows across and the highest one is going to have the bar go the furthest and the lowest one is going to have it go um, the shortest. Or maybe we want to use a color scale, scale where our highest values are green um, and our lowest values are red. And this may be very useful for something like jump scores or um, RPE values or wellness questionnaires. Or maybe we want to um, make it the opposite. So we can select over here so that the highest value is red. Um, and the lowest value is green, and maybe we want to use this for um, sprint times or something to that effect. Um, and then some other options here is there's some icons. So maybe we have icons here, and this might be useful for something like an FMS scoring sheet. Um, I like this one in particular. So you got the X's, um, the exclamation marks, and the check marks. And that one might work very well for FMS, whereas the X's is a zero or a one score, and then the exclamation um, is a a two and the and the check mark is a three. Um, there's lots of options here. Um, really, the sky's the limit. So, um, lots of different things to use, and they can really make your charts and your spreadsheets um, <clears throat> just look that much more visually appealing. So that when you're giving them to your coaches, um, they have an idea what they're looking at. And that's our trick for today. So. If you like this trick, um, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel as I'm going to try to post uh, more tricks on how to do testing results, visualizations, and other tricks that personal trainers, strength coaches, and other fitness professionals might find useful. As well as, I'm going to post a bunch of resources that have really helped me in my journey in the description. So one of the ones that I highly recommend is Steve Olson's book, The Coach's Guide for Microsoft Excel. Great book, and I've taken a lot of lessons from that that I apply in my own templates every single day. Finally, if you want to follow what's going on with me, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at DSM Strength. Um, give me a follow and um, send me a message if you want to um, talk about any of the Excel tricks that you've been working on. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.